Hi, I'm Tim Shador, and we're going to be talking about what Brick can do for you. Uh, this extends an earlier talk about the architecture of Brick and includes a lot of the terminology that Brick uses. Um, I won't be going over that in this presentation, but you should look at the link in the description if you ever get lost. It also includes our old friend, Toby McGuire. So we're going to start all these examples that follow. We'll use this code um, as a model example. So we have a ID field, we have a toppings field, which is a, an enum. And then we have a frozen field, which is a Boolean. And then we have a customer, which is an association on uh, the pizza model. So uh, one way that you could create uh, data is you could hand roll your own uh, SQLite query. So in this case, we're going to be using SQL flight, make the select request, uh, run through everything. And then we have to make the association request and then uh, construct the, serial, the association model. Um, Boo, this is, this is bad. This isn't, uh, this isn't what we want to do as developers. We can uh, generate all this code. So uh, Brick out of the box generates adapters to and from uh, providers. So in this case, this is, a, uh, this is the pizza model coming in from SQLite and it handles, uh, say the toppings come in as integers. We look up their enums and assign them as toppings. Say uh, we want to find the customer association. We can look up the primary key that's associated on this row of, uh, of this pizza row. Um, Brick also handles for every other provider that's associated in this domain. So if we're using connect offline first with REST, this is what it looks like from, from REST. This is what it looks like when we're serializing it to REST. Um, and generally, like we, we handle all of the methods to and from in a domain uh, to different providers. So the adapter can really translate everything. And again, none of this is handwritten. All of this is generated code that's immediately available to you out of the box from installing Brick. Another big boo, uh, if, you're, if you've ever tried to track migrations manually in your application. So say we want to add the pizza model. This is what the SQLite would look like to add a pizza model. And we need to do this every single time that we add a new version because we don't want to create a, a conflict when we're inserting columns and tables. Um, this sucks. Instead, uh, Brick offers a pretty legible API to write your own migrations, but you don't even need it to write your own migrations. Brick generates these automatically. Uh, Dart's strongly typed system allows us to infer from, from a given class what it would need. So say this, uh, this frozen member on pizza, we know it's a Boolean. We can just say, Hey, when you insert this column, make it a Boolean type. Um, which is a misnomer a little bit because SQLite doesn't support Booleans. It's more of an integer, but that's in the weeds. Uh, or say we know that we're making an association, so Brick will automatically generate a foreign key column name. It'll make it an integer. It'll put it, uh, it'll say, okay, we're associating the uh, pizza table to the customer table, and it handles all this behind the scenes. Uh, you should always go back and review the migrations that are generated just in case something uh, weird happened because you are smarter than Brick, even though Brick is pretty smart. Um, but for the most part, you don't need to do that. This, this all happens automatically behind the scenes. Another thing that sucks, if you are working with specific providers, so going back to the original example of uh, deserializing from SQLite, what happens when we have to deserialize from Firebase or what happens when we have to deserialize from REST? Um, doesn't, it doesn't matter. Uh, Brick handles all that just on its own. Yeah, this is a big ol' X. So instead, the repository will figure out what provider it should return to you. So um, say we want to get all of the pepperoni pizzas, but we don't have any pepperoni pizzas in, in memory cache. We're going to look at SQLite. We don't have any pepperoni pizzas in SQLite. Now we'll go to REST. But the next time that we make this query, we'll just get the stuff from, from memory cache. We don't need to worry about um, where the data is coming from. We just need to worry about what the data is. Uh, and that's exactly how an application should function. Um, or say that you have a situation where you want to be offline, offline first, uh, and you're constantly checking, am I online? Do I have Wi-Fi connection? Do I have cellular connection? What's my, my bandwidth? It doesn't, it shouldn't matter. You should just always serve the same data. There shouldn't be a whole bunch of control statements throughout your app, your app. Brick does this automatically. Um, yeah, boo X. Um, again, you just request it and Brick will figure it out. Uh, the Brick offline first with rest. Domain, for example, will always feed you data from a local source. It will never feed you data directly from REST. So you never need to worry about inconsistent data because it's always going to be the same that's on the device. Um, 
of course, if your device has been offline for weeks, uh, it will get out of sync, but that's a problem that we can't solve because we can't control a device's online connectivity. Um, but really, just don't worry about where your data is coming from. Just worry about what it is. Rick will handle the where. Or say you have something like this. Uh, this is another big bad situation when you're getting uh, a whole list of stuff and then you have to filter it after the fact. So you've already made uh, a very taxing query to say an API or say to a uh, Firebase provider. You've already like queried all these documents and you don't like, you don't need all of that. You just need a certain query, but the querying API is, uh, isn't difficult to use or you have to use its logic in multiple cases. So you're trying to merge results from Firebase and SQLite. Um, and it's decently complex logic and it looks weird. Uh, it's difficult to read. Boo. Or just write the query once and write it before any fetching happens. So we're gonna send this data to the providers and then they'll construct a query that will narrow the data for us. Uh, we only need to write this once. We don't need to write it after the fact. We don't need to write it per provider. And then it also just reads really well. So one of the things that we wanted to do with Brick is that making sure that it reads left to right very simply makes it for very maintainable code, makes it very legible, makes it easy for another member of your team to pick up. Another really great feature of Brick is that you can query association data. So we can look up a customer's first name when we're querying a pizza model. Uh, we don't need to do a whole bunch of complex joining. We can just say, uh, I wanna look up this field and then this nested property on this field. So uh, in this case, again, it reads very clearly where the customer's first name is exactly Toby. Um, and then we get all the pizzas that Toby has ever purchased. Um, and then just really simply uh, how you insert and create a model. It's legitimately this easy. You just upsert, you, uh, it'll update or insert the model, and then you can also delete um, and it's gone. And that's it. Brick handles a ton. Uh, it really wants to return the focus back to your application code. You shouldn't need to worry about where your, your data is coming from. New stuff is being added every day. New features are being added all the time. Please check out the README. The description includes a link to the Brick repository page. Good luck out there.